Innovation, imagination, wonder. These are just some of the words used to describe Dr. Harvey Passes. Dr. Passes explores interesting people and ideas that will stimulate you. He questions the people who develop, create, and employ novel concepts in business and everyday lives. He especially loves to speak with successful people. How did they do it? How can you do it too? So let's join Dr. Harvey Passes in his quest of wonder and curiosity as we watch Dr. Harvey Passes Presents. It's that time of year again. Oh, I'm not talking about time getting ready for the holidays and, you know, gifts and candies and nice baked goods, home-baked goods and pies and everything else. No, I'm not talking about ho, 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 and let's get the menorahs cracking and all. No, 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 no. I'm talking about a time when blood supply is low. Right, boy, did I just take the wind out of your sails in the holiday season. <laughs> blood and holiday season? It seems that the blood supply during holiday season gets to be dwindled because uh, it seems to be used a lot at that time. And I decided to do a television show to help raise the awareness so that people could donate blood. So this is going to be a very interesting show, and you're going to meet a very interesting individual with a, a, just a phenomenal first name. I mean, I just can't believe his first name. So you're going to meet right now, without any further ado, I will introduce to you Harvey Schaffler. <laughs> How are you, Harvey? Here. It's a pleasure to see you, Harvey. Likewise. And uh, let me tell the folks at home a little bit about who you are. Harvey Schaffler is the executive director at Long Island Blood Services, which is a division of the New York Blood Center. This is a not-for-profit organization designed to help you. God forbid you need blood. Where are you going to get the blood from? Uh, from, rather. Let's make any talk because there's no blood. Uh, Harvey Schaffler has been with the New York Blood Services for 21 years. No wonder your cheeks are pink and rosy. Uh, in various managerial positions, you focused extensively on the development of programs to recruit blood donors and build a safe and ample blood supply for our region. We're going to get into that, what you define as region. So prior to working for LIBS, as you call it, Long Island Blood Services, I caught that earlier, uh, you served as a senior marketing executive for a publicly owned home health care company and for two managed care organizations. So you really understand this business. You're a resident of Plainview and you hold a bachelor's degree from Brooklyn College and a master's degree in health services administration from good old Stony Brook University. What, when you say here, um, making sure that our region has enough blood, what region? I mean, the, the Northeast, the Tri-State, or is it just, uh, you know, Great Neck? So, I mean, right. what are we talking about? Well, Long Island Blood Services uh, covers uh, Queens, Nassau, and Suffolk counties. Ah, okay. Uh, and our parent organization, uh, New York Blood Center, includes the uh, entire metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. So that's uh, New York City, Long Island, Hudson Valley, and New Jersey. So when you say New York City, you're talking about all the boroughs except Queens. Well, Queens... Because, you, because, you're, you're, because Long Island Blood Services is Queens. Right. So New York Blood Center, our parent, is organized into five operating regions. Right. Uh, for our own convenience, we've put Queens in with our Long Island uh, region. Uh, Bronx, for example, the Bronx is in with our Hudson Valley region, gotcha. uh, et cetera. And we have uh, Brooklyn, Staten Island, we cover, and Manhattan. Right. Uh, and collectively, the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. So I can get some of the... Uh, maybe the legal mumbo jumbo out of the way I, and, and then we can get into the gritty stuff here nitty-gritty stuff uh, as I said earlier this is a not-for-profit organization so mm -hmm. people have to understand that and I I'm curious to know who regulates it, it, it regulates it is it the state who regulates this or hospitals or who regulates this okay. uh, our primary regulator is the uh, US uh, Food and Drug Administration the FDA the FDA uh, we also are regulated by the uh, New York uh, State Department of Health uh -huh. and uh, in New Jersey, New Jersey uh, uh, Health Department, mm -hmm. uh, as well as local um, health departments. Uh, but when I say the FDA, it really, uh, they categorize us uh, like a pharmaceutical company because we are producing a biological that's uh, available only upon prescription. Oh, very so, interesting uh, how that works. 
Okay, so then now this isn't just someone saying, hey, let's start a quick business here and let's, you know, we can just be a quick buck. It's not that way at all. This is a, this is a very important integral part of the uh, health care uh, in our region. That's right. And if, if we don't uh, succeed in our mission of providing blood, wow. then hospitals can't open their doors every day um, because it's the, um, I guess, the uh, ingredient that's required, for example, with surgeries or accident victims, Absolutely. et cetera. Um, Absolutely. So. It's the liquid of life. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. How is the current supply of blood right now? Well, as we enter the holiday period, uh, our supply is uh, a, a bit shy. Uh, it's, uh, we know that demand, for example, for blood uh, products continues uh, constantly throughout the year. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also know, as we kind of forecast ahead a couple of weeks, that the uh, number of people donating blood will um, decline dramatically. Uh, and that's because the uh, schools go on vacation and businesses uh, operate on mm. skeletal schedules and people are thinking about uh, vacations, et cetera. But the need for blood doesn't take a vacation. Correct. So uh, we've got to ideally uh, store up a little inventory just prior to the holidays so that we can kind of eke through the holiday weeks and then uh, rebuild as we get into January. Is there an expiration date on the blood? Yes. Uh, People should understand that. They shouldn't think, what's the big deal? You pray, why don't you collect it during the summer so you got it for Christmas? Right. No, this is a biological that has an uh, uh, expiration 42 days uh, for red blood cells, mm -hmm. although the reality is that uh, they're used typically within two weeks. Uh, we don't keep that long a supply, and it kind of uh, comes in and goes right. out. Always being asked. Absolutely. And uh, so we can't, uh, as you suggested, uh, collect blood in the... Uh, uh, boon times and, right. and just uh, store it for some uh, rainy day. Interesting. You can't freeze it. Uh, it, it will still expire. Uh, you can freeze blood, uh, but it has then limited indications and some other uh, issues associated with using it when it's frozen. So uh, again, storage is an issue. You can't uh, uh, freeze an infinite amount, but uh, you can freeze it and then uh, once it's uh, thawed, it must be used within 24 hours. So it doesn't oh. quite have the utility mm -hmm. of a liquid uh, supply. Uh, and then we get the issue also of blood comes in uh, different blood types or more colloquially uh, different flavors. Right. Uh, and uh, you've got to have the appropriate blood types, which is also what makes uh, this very challenging to provide the needed supply for our hospitals and their patients. Why do shortages occur? I think the primary reason is that uh, people simply aren't aware uh, of the need for blood. And uh, if they go to a hospital, they're certainly making sure that they're... Uh, uh, physician or surgeon is well qualified, et cetera. Uh, they depend upon the hospital to provide all the other supplies and amenities needed for their mm -hmm. uh, procedures. And um, blood is uh, something that just can't be purchased from a vendor. Uh, blood, uh, its only source are human beings, volunteer blood donors. Mm. And so again, every day we've got to make sure that we have sufficient number of blood drives that will generate the needed wow. supply that we can uh, every day, uh, just like the um, uh, milk uh, vendors uh, fill the supermarket shelves every day. Right. Uh, we've got to do the same for the hospitals. That's very interesting. So, would you say that the holiday season, you know, the Christmas time of year, for lack of a better way of describing it, is the most difficult time of year to, for, for you to collect blood? Yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, people, again, are uh, away. Uh, the education segment, if you will, which includes high schools, colleges, right. uh, even the schools with PTA blood drives, mm -hmm. Uh, account for approximately 30% of our blood supply. Hmm. Uh, and that effectively is simply not available during the holiday weeks. So you've got to look to other sources, uh, but even businesses, which is another uh, large uh, segment, they're on vacation schedules. Uh, so it's people's minds are just uh, onto other activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like when you turn your water faucet, you're not thinking about what made that happen, that it came out uh, right. uh, on demand. Right. Uh, same thing with blood. Uh, we've got to find um, people who are available, even during holiday weeks, to donate. Do people donate blood for themselves if they know they're going in for a procedure? And is that kind of ridiculous to do, or it's not ridiculous? Well, it accounts for a very small, uh, very, very small percentage of all the blood that is used. Um, First, in many cases, uh, if people are going to require blood, uh, A, it may be an accident, so they're not going to have the chance to do that. Right. Uh, Maybe a medical problem where they're simply not able to donate blood. Uh, but there are procedures, perhaps, if you're having an elective uh, orthopedic procedure, hip replacement, other joint replacement, uh, you know, a person might 
donate blood for their own needs we do say that the safest blood you can use is your own right uh, and uh, so that's a, a very small part of the supply but practically speaking um, you know 99 percent of the blood that is do used not, right. depends upon uh, thoughtful generous volunteer blood donors why don't more people give blood I think primarily because they've never been asked and uh, so our job really is to make sure uh, we get out to the community get out to organizations and put people in a uh, convenient uh, situation mm -hmm. where they're asked it's convenient and they have the time to do it hmm. it's amazing this is a whole it's a whole marketing science here to get blood from people it's funny to get blood from the stone so is 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 there a fear factor involved in this for some people there are uh, you know we recognize that some people from the time they were children getting their uh, inoculations or whatever they have a fear of needles uh, right. you know I'm sure you face it in your own practice of yeah, people who are uh, not very happy to see you but uh, love to see uh, <laughs> we, we, we can, um, you know, even with those folks aside, respecting, uh, you know, their concerns, uh, there's certainly plenty of people who are medically eligible, otherwise able to donate, even willing to donate, mm -hmm. even call themselves a blood donor, but maybe haven't donated in a couple of years. So our job is to try to get the message out to them, uh, reach out to our donors. We certainly know uh, over the years, um, literally uh, millions of people who have donated blood, mm -hmm. and, and so we have various ways of reaching out to them to invite them and uh, advise them of convenient blood drives, et cetera. So John Doe goes ahead and gives blood on December 1st. Mm -hmm. When can John Doe give blood again? John Doe can give blood again in eight weeks, 56 days between That's blood That's the donations. way it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eight weeks. Right. Very, and wh what, what is the maximum amount of blood that John Doe can, can give on December 1st without him dropping dead? <laughs> well, there's a couple of different ways. Uh, the, I mean, how much the, blood do you well, look for? When we think about donating blood, you're donating typically a pint of blood. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a newer technology we have where we can get what we call two units of red cells. Uh, it's uh, instead of getting whole blood, which includes your platelets and plasma, uh, this uses an automated technology to um, give you back the platelets and plasma and simply remove red cells. Because really? when we talk about blood donations, uh, usually we're talking about red cell donations. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the, uh, the blood component that's needed in the, in the greatest uh, volume. Mm -hmm. And so we're always looking for ways to uh, maximize the amount of red blood cells that we can collect. And if we have technology that on one visit can extract from you the equivalent of two therapeutic doses that we might get from... Uh, so so uh, it, am I correct in, in thinking that the blood will be extracted and then the red blood cells will then further be extracted and the rest of the plasma will go back into you? Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Through a continuous uh, loop system, yeah. Very interesting, mm -hmm. very yep. interesting. So um, out one arm in the other arm or something? Like uh, that? In the case of this, it's actually out one arm and, and back in that other arm, almost like uh, uh, you know, one-way street that for a certain you know, cycle, the blood is being withdrawn and then uh, the cycle reverses itself and the platelets and plasma are returned while oh, your red oh, cells, the, oh, the red oh. cells are, spun, uh, the blood is spun in a uh, centrifuge. Right. Uh, it's all inside, by the way, sterile tubing, et cetera. Uh, and the red cells are extracted and the other components are returned to you. So it's... Um, so it's all through one tube. It's, I, I mean, I'm picturing that you've got a loop. You're telling me that's not the case. Uh, not for this procedure. Uh, there's other procedures where we collect platelets, for example, where we do use literally that loop you described where it's two needles. Right. Uh, blood is drawn from one arm and uh, the other components are, depending if, if we're extracting the platelets in that case, yes. then your red cells are returned. Yes, uh, via just whatever it is you're taking, That's and the right. rest goes back in. Right. So in that case, you really don't lose a lot of volume. Right, and, and also we're able to target uh, the component that's needed most, uh, or at least that we're targeting for that particular donor, and get a high concentration of it uh, versus whole blood where we get one unit of red cells and um, a small volume of platelet and plasma. Do you check for, say, hepatitis or AIDS? And all, I mean, if someone's going to give blood, how do you know what you're getting? Or do, do you test each individual, or do you do an, or just a verbal screening, a written screening? Uh, we do both. Uh, in fact, the uh, strongest part of the whole process to ensure the safety of the blood supply is that screening up front, both answering lots of questions. In fact, many repeat donors are asking, why do I have to keep answering the same question? Because? The is, because today your history is different than it was Correct. two months ago. Correct. So uh, you answer the questions, and often those questions will change based upon FDA um, regulations. Yes. Right. 
Uh, you uh, then, uh, assuming that's good, uh, you do a little MIDI medical. We'll take your temperature, your blood pressure, pulse. Some vital signs. A little um, uh, sample from your finger, right, so that we can test your hemoglobin level, your iron level, make sure you're uh, suitable to donate blood from your own. You're not anemic. Your own healthy uh, health point of view, right? So then the blood is collected, and then the um, blood is tested for the uh, viral markers. might include hepatitis, uh, mm. certainly uh, HIV, uh, West Nile virus, Correct. Um, Chagas disease, a whole host of things that people have never heard of, right. but that are transfusable uh, via blood donation. So we've got to make sure that... Uh, and all that safe. information is then presented to the donor. Well, uh, if, it's it's not kept it, secret. if there's anything of consequence, uh, if everything is normal, then uh, there's nothing to You tell to them everything is for, normal. Right, right. <laughs> if, if there's, if there's uh, any kind of problem, certainly uh, we it's will uh, inform the donor. And depending on the severity of what we find, uh, we have different ways of informing the donor. And then all of this is linked via computer so that we, when the testing is done in our testing laboratory, uh, we can then um, report those results back because your unit is being held essentially quarantined for a couple of days mm. uh, until we get your test results, and then it's released uh, to uh, to the hospital as needed. So you really won't know if the individual is suitable or not. You'll take the blood, and then if it turns out that there is a problem, then that blood is then maybe sent over destroyed. for it. It's destroyed. Yeah, it could be used for certain research, but uh, basically it's certainly not going to be used for uh, transfusion purposes. Of course not. Mm -hmm. Now, who can donate? The well, age and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, sex, gender, whatever. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. The basic requirements are quite simple. Uh, you've got to be... Please. Uh, <laughs> well, that's uh, certainly an <laughs> absolute uh, requirement. Um, you've got to be at least 16 years old. 16. Uh, and 16 does require parental consent, a little uh, written authorization. Mm -hmm. uh, 17 and beyond uh, is... Uh, you, you, uh, no parental. Uh, not, not at all. Uh, and you've got to be 110 pounds oh. and just be in general good health. So that's the minimum requirement. And then, again, uh, you'll answer a bunch of questions and have that mini-medical. If all of that goes well, then you will actually um, be taken in to have your blood drawn. Hmm. Do people get paid to, uh, to, to give blood, by the way? No, it's an entirely volunteer system. It's entirely system. volunteer. Right. Uh, and, um, you know, probably going back 50, 60 years, uh, you know, some people remember paid donors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I but uh, I, I think as a society we've come to the conclusion that the best way to create a safe uh, and ample blood supply is to rely on healthy volunteer donors. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like Social Security, you know. Uh, you know, today uh, we're working and we're providing the funds that are supporting people who are drawing on those funds. Well, if you donate today, it creates a healthy blood supply. People who need it get it. Uh, there's no requirement that you have uh, had to donate blood in order to receive blood. Right. Uh, and um, as uh, as we age, uh, and uh, perhaps our generation requires uh, blood, or the blood doesn't uh, really uh, um, have age barriers. You can require blood, you know, as a, as a neonate. So um, uh, it's just a current supply. Uh, that um, by healthy donors donating, it provides a blood supply for whoever needs it. And there's no uh, upper age limit? You can be as old as you as be? Unless you're infirm, obviously. <laughs> They're actually if healthy. Um, I mean, is there is there an age limit, even though they're healthy? Uh, there is a limit at age seventy six, but simply uh, at that point, a requirement that you present a physician's note, uh, which is valid for a year. So we have uh, lots of donors who are beyond age seventy six. Once a year, they present a simple physician's note, right. uh, um, you know, saying that they're uh, okay to donate blood. And then again, they still have to go through our questions, right. but um, there's nothing to stop you. How long does the process take? So John Doe wants to go down there and says, hey, I'd like to donate some blood. Yeah. He goes in at uh, 10 o'clock. What time does he go walk out? He should be out by 11. Uh, uh, so it takes about an hour to get everything done. Yeah, the actual blood drawing is only uh, 10 minutes or so. Oh. Uh, but there's the completing of the paperwork, and there's the interview with our technician about your health history. And uh, we want you to spend a few minutes afterwards in our refreshment area to, uh, you know, get some... Uh, fluids and mm -hmm. uh, have some of our uh, famous cookies, et cetera. <laughs> uh, and um, so again, you know, the donor safety is uh, just as important as the recipient safety. Right. Nobody bites you in the neck or anything like that. Okay. No, it's uh, <laughs> quite civil. What, what happens if you take medication? How does that work? Because mm -hmm. most of us do today. Right. Uh, and most of those medications are not a barrier to donating blood. No kidding. Uh, there are a very, very uh, small number of uh, medications that have systemic effects that could be transfused uh, to a, a patient and, and, and affect them. Uh, but let me give you an example. Yeah. Uh, we hear often people saying, I'm on blood pressure medicine, cholesterol medication, no problem. Now, we'll take your blood pressure. Uh, as long as your blood pressure is within acceptable limits, no problem. 
Um, diabetics, uh, as long as, uh, even if they're uh, injecting insulin, as long as it is being managed and they're, you know, uh, under control, they can donate blood, and certainly um, anything in between. Hmm. Very interesting. Very broad, broad range. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Now, what happens in a blood shortage? What, what, what I mean, you got me thinking now. So now, what happens all of a sudden? Say you're down. I mean, what's considered a shortage? Five percent, ten percent below? It's, it's like a reservoir, mm -hmm. and you know the reservoir during the summer here is down thirty percent. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. what's what's a shortage? Mm -hmm. Well, we like to keep on hand uh, a uh, comfortably a five to seven day supply. Right, oh, okay. uh, so and so we supply. look. We, we we know what demand is going to be. We also can forecast the uh, blood drives and what the uh, number of blood donations is going to be. And uh, if we see that that supply is going to go down, particularly if it gets down below a three-day level, uh, we consider that uh, an emergency. Uh, and that's why you might hear a, a media appeal where we'll uh, talk to the media, ask them to pass the message along. Right. Uh, people do get uh, sort of motivated by that, it becomes genuine when, you know, yeah. uh, the newscaster says right. there's a blood shortage. Tonight we're low on blood. We um, need you to get down there now. Walter Cronkite saying good night and good luck, right? Okay. That kind of a uh, thing. That makes the phone ring. <laughs> it makes the phone ring. So uh, it really does work. Yeah, and I should point out, actually, when we talk about our local blood supply, uh, the New York area is not self-sufficient in meeting its need for blood. So on a regular basis, we actually import blood from other parts of this country. Really? Yes. Uh, and when you consider the size of this population. Absolutely, and even how, I'm, I'm how, floored by that. How comment. well educated we are, et cetera. We, there's, there's certainly no shortage of blood. There's a shortage of blood in our inventory because we've all got it. Right. Uh, and uh, so we have uh, part of the blood supply used in our area, in our local hospitals. Uh, will come from Virginia, will come from Texas, will come from really? California. What about, what about uh, overseas? Uh, years ago, actually, uh, we had a program where we did import blood from uh, certain countries in uh, Western Europe. Uh, all of that got uh, taken away when the FDA uh, put in new rules regarding mad cow disease. Wow. Uh, and uh, so wow. those folks uh, who live, uh, particularly uh, Western Europe, uh, there are r rules that basically say if you've lived in Western Europe for five years or more between a certain period, you can't, you can't donate. Well, those folks were the uh, natives of those countries, so uh, they can't donate. Um, and so we cannot take that blood anymore from them. Do we get uh, any blood from China? Uh, no, no. You check for lead in the blood. Yeah. You know, the FDA standards are, are, are very high. Uh, in, in fact, uh, recently we entered into an agreement um, uh, along with other blood centers to provide blood to Israel uh, in the event of a, um, an emergency. Right. And uh, somebody asked whether that agreement is reciprocal. Uh, and the answer is uh, it's not because Israel, uh, you know, while its so blood supply is safe, no, it's just that they don't um, use the FDA, our U.S. FDA standards. So when we brought blood in from, from uh, Europe years ago, those blood centers actually were uh, operating and inspected by the, the FDA, FDA as if they were collecting blood locally. Same exact requirements. Uh, and blood centers around the world have a um, core of, of our requirements are, are, are similar, but there are some differences from country to country for whatever reasons. And so uh, we can't take blood from a country unless it had our standards, and we're the only country that has our standards. Let's get this up so I can help you. Where can people go to donate? What can they do? And I'm sure we're going to show, we're going to put the graphic up right now. So I'm going to tell my staff, um, please put on the screen the um, 800 number for uh, Long Island Blood Services and uh, also the um, uh, website, which is www.newyorknybloodcenter.org. I like your phone number, 800-933-BLOOD. Right. And don't worry, folks, that it's got extra letters in there and numbers that doesn't really matter. Just dial 800-933-BLOOD. And this way, um, it would be good for you to donate. I think it's an excellent idea and good. We have that up on the screen there. So that's, that's good. Very, very important. Um, all right. So uh, people can, uh, they can just call the, that phone number. And yeah, go to the and website, they can learn. Right? Is that how they can yeah, learn? Yeah, you, you can, you can uh, A, learn about blood drives in your neighborhood. You can also uh, uh, learn about our donor centers that we have uh, spread throughout uh, the uh, Long Island and the greater New York area. Mm -hmm. So there are many opportunities to donate. Or even if somebody uh, wants to host a blood drive, uh, really? that uh, you know, would be even more um, welcome if somebody uh, either works for an organization uh, that doesn't sponsor a blood drive or um, a house of worship or a community group or uh, maybe a school. Although we've got pretty good penetration uh, with most organizations, 
Uh, there are thousands of organizations that sponsor blood drives uh, annually, mm -hmm. but uh, there are probably some we don't know about or for whatever reason haven't reached, so uh, they can certainly let us know. What, what does it mean when you say bloodless surgery? Mm -hmm. I mean, how, it, what, is, that, is that true? Uh, in some cases, it, it can be. Uh, there are techniques to minimize, uh, which, by the way, we, uh, just like the, the power company uh, promotes conservation, uh, you know, we also uh, promote, promote conservation. Uh, of blood. conservation. There is one technique, for example, which is something else that we do as an organization called uh, perioperative autologous transfusion, mm -hmm. uh, also known as cell salvage. And what it is is actually a procedure where uh, during the surgical procedure, blood that otherwise might have been you know, uh, collected well, in, on, on, on the dabbed, gauze pads and, right. and, and discarded right. is uh, suctioned uh, into a special machine that effectively washes the red blood cells uh, and then prepares them for reinfusion. To the same patient? To the same, of course, yes. So uh, the patient gets his own blood uh, in a very fresh uh, really? situation. And um, uh, that's used in, in many um, certain orthopedic uh, um, procedures and uh, other procedures. Uh, there are other techniques that um, are used by hospitals, um, uh, what we call hemodilution, where they'll have you uh, draw blood um, you know, shortly before the surgery. They might take out a couple of... Uh, pints of blood and replace it with um, you know, saline solution. Just to keep the volume uh, so up. It, right, so it keeps the volume up, but it's sort of diluted, mm -hmm. uh, and then they can, uh, as necessary, uh, transfuse back the uh, full you know, uh, right. blood cell concentrate. What, what do you do, we're almost out of time, by the way, but a quick question, what do you do when an individual says, uh, after they give blood, I feel faint? If somebody uh, is not feeling well, there are simple techniques to just uh, you know, elevate their legs and give them a little cold compress, uh, mm -hmm. and generally uh, that passes in five minutes or so, and. Uh, uh, people leave uh, just as healthy and chipper as they came in. Why, why don't you advertise? Well, advertising in the pure sense is simply uh, something we don't have the resources for. So it's a money um, issue. Yeah, we do focus our, our resources in terms of our, our marketing budget, if you will, uh, to people who have donated blood before because, again, we know stuff about them. We know their blood type. We know where they live. So we can call or write to them and suggest they mm -hmm. do this kind of donation or that kind or, or come in at a certain drive that's near where they live. We have uh, various programs. We even have a program, uh, we call it our Advantage program, where you actually earn points, almost like a frequent flyer program. This yeah. is a frequent donor program just to provide some form of recognition uh, where you earn points and you can not just save lives, but ultimately you know, redeem those points for some uh, little, little gift items. Uh, some some uh, <laughs> nice gift items or gift cards, uh, things that uh, still within the spirit of a volunteer donor, mm -hmm. yet uh, a, a way of saying thank you. Hmm. Very interesting. Mm. Very interesting. Maybe we can talk in some way, and maybe I can assist you in some way to get the the name out, the and the not the name out, but to get the message out, sure. <clears throat> so that people do uh, partake in this. It's very important. We're just about out of time. We got about a minute left. What parting comment can you make? to uh, tell my viewer at home who's watching all about this and uh, the importance of it. I guess my uh, big message would be uh, don't wait until you see a headline uh, that suggests that uh, people require blood or some, some public tragedy that uh, you know, motivates you or a newscaster that motivates you. Every day there are private tragedies. Okay? It could be your family or my family, true. a loved one dealing with cancer or That's somebody has fact. an accident mm -hmm. or some other uh, blood disorder. Uh, and uh, blood is needed every day. Uh, it's, it it kind of goes on silently, but uh, thankfully, uh, blood is there because there are uh, lots of uh, healthy, thoughtful, volunteer blood donors, mm -hmm. uh, but also not enough to meet the needs. So uh, if you uh, have donated blood, uh, my question would be, when was the last time you donated blood? You can donate every 56 days, and uh, if everybody who's eligible simply donated even once or twice a year, we wouldn't we rely never on, have a problem. Never have a problem. Wouldn't be relying on any other parts of the country. Uh, so just donate more frequently and uh, bring a friend, bring your uh, 16, 17-year-old uh, child with you uh, and um, make it a fun experience. <laughs> make it a fun experience. Hello. <laughs> Can be. Hey, you gave me a crack earlier about going to the dentist. <laughs> Back <laughs> at you. <laughs> Back at you. Well, listen, I really appreciate you, you coming down here and discussing it because there are things that you've taught me that I didn't even know anything about, and I'm sure that my viewer at home is feeling the same way. So it's very, very, very important uh, for us to keep our blood supply up because you just never know. I mean, it, 
you could need it tomorrow. You have no idea if this, if this can happen or not. So, Harvey Schaffler, I want to thank you very much for coming down here. Thank for you Long so Island much. Blood Services from the New York Blood Center, uh, the big umbrella organization. Thanks very much. We'll get the word out. And in the future, if I can help you with any of this, you'll let me know. It's my pleasure to do what I can for you. I think this is great. Okay, so remember, it's good to get, but give. Give some blood. Okay, until next time, Dr. Pass is saying, whatever you do, do it with passion or what's the use. See you again next time. Pleasure.